think we were very fortunate because uh, in the 1960s, actually, the, we had a very good uh, infrastructure that was for public health. And um, with that, actually, uh, all the government hospitals uh, were able to have uh, doctors who were uh, seeing a lot of TB cases. And um, so TB awareness was high at that time. And uh, we also had a TB national control program. Today, it's known as the STEP of Singapore Tub Tuberculosis Elimination Program. Um, the government also introduced BCG vaccination, which was very effective actually for the infants, newborn, and children. So um, the other uh, big uh, event was also the introduction of uh, effective chemotherapy. Um, and uh, lastly, there were a lot of advances made uh, in the laboratory for the diagnosis of TB. And uh, later on in the 1980s, we saw that uh, with the introduction of computers and IT, actually, there was a pitch between the laboratory and uh, with the STEP program. So the laboratory results could be downloaded faster. And uh, so contact tracing and patient management was a lot more effective then. Um, there was also a program called uh, DOTS, whereby um, the healthcare worker will actually ensure that the patient took medication every day for six months. And this even included nurses from polyclinics going out to the patient's home just to make sure that the patient swallowed his tablets. So um, all this, uh, I think, made uh, the decline of TB very rapid in Singapore. Right. So it generally all starts with the patient going to see the doctor for his uh, symptoms. And if the doctor actually suspects TB, he will send the patient for the necessary laboratory test. In our laboratory, there are a range of tests that help the doctor make an earlier diagnosis of TB, such as acid fast smears. Um, and they also send the samples for TB cultures. Um, and nowadays, we also have a rapid molecular test that help the doctor make uh, faster decisions even within the day itself to start patient on empiric therapy. And in the last few years, we've also introduced immunological tests such as uh, quantiferon and T-spot. And this is important because these tests enable the doctor to detect cases of latent TB. And um, once the results are known, then the lab results are actually conveyed by various means to the doctor. At the same time, there's also uh, another loop whereby the lab results are electronically downloaded over at the TB control unit at the step registry in Tanaxing. And the doctors will actually follow up with all the TB patients to make sure that they have been started on TB treatment and there's contact tracing. The doctors who are the primary physicians looking after the TB patients, they are alerted to the diagnosis of TB, the positive results, and they will call back these patients to make sure that they are started on treatment. At the same time, they will notify the Ministry of Health to ensure that the patients are actually followed up and their contacts are also traced. The most important hazard in the TB lab is biohazards. Uh, because TB is a highly infectious uh, agent, it spreads easily by aerosol. So the risk to a uh, TB worker is actually high unless you provide uh, safety equipment and they work wearing full protective uh, uh, equipment such as uh, proper head covering and uh, M95 respirator, and uh, they have to practice what we term as biosafety level 3 uh, practices and procedures. The biosafety level 3 laboratory itself has special engineering features to ensure that the lab worker doesn't get exposed to two courses, and it will also make sure that uh, any TD which is 
inadvertently released in any way is actually contained within the facility and uh, can be treated effectively. There are other hazards also that the staff actually encounter. I think one of the most uh, um, important ones to me is actually that of stress. Because working in a containment lab actually imposes some form of physical as well as emotional and mental stress on the lab worker. So uh, for our staff, um, I think it's very important to cater to their well-being, uh, to be very interested in their work, to make sure that they have got an effective medical uh, surveillance plan, they are properly protected with necessary equipment, and the facility is well maintained. Well, in the first place, uh, you have to be interested in the work yourself. Uh, and uh, the second thing is you have to share with the staff, actually, whatever findings or new things that you see. Um, you try to allow them to interact as much as possible with uh, other people in the field, such as uh, the doctors, the nurses, and allow them to interact with other professionals, in uh, lab professionals especially, who are working in the same field, either locally or internationally so that they can understand the importance of the work they do on a global scale. Uh, total TB elimination. <laughs> um, I think it's rather tough because TB has been around with us since uh, for centuries. But I think we are living in a very different era now. And uh, people are communicating uh, globally when it comes to actual tracking of disease, data sharing, um, communications, and even um, there is also a global effort actually to eliminate TB. So we have new tools as well in terms of diagnosis and elimination, which are even introduced in uh, uh, lesser developed countries. So I think there is hope actually that uh, we can see elimination of TB. I think <clears throat> Singapore is quite remarkable. The fact that we're a very small nation, but yet uh, the, the, the human will is quite amazing when it comes to the people who are involved in uh, treating and controlling infectious diseases. And um, I think it would be very good and ideal if there were more people actually involved in this field. Um, we need everyone's help in this because infectious disease involves everyone. These diseases are contagious and especially when it comes to TB, um, usually the patient is an innocent bystander. He's done nothing to deserve getting TB. So um, greater awareness would be very good and greater interest in this field would be really excellent actually if you see younger generation coming out to actually work on infectious diseases.